What's up, X and YouTube? Matt A here. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the latest reveal from Diablo 4, the Gamescom reveal, where they go a little bit more in depth with Vessel of Hatred, and they kind of tell us more about it, right? So we're going to take a look at that and see what's going on. I'm going to watch it live with you. I'm a little bit late on this, but I don't know. I just felt like watching it later and I'll put it off to later and see what's going on. The video, uh, the highlights are, it, you know, it's only seven minutes. Let's go take a look at this and see what's going on here. Take a, take a look. Let's give it a little peek. See what we got. Right, 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 new region. Hatred, we travel south to Nahantu, a region with both deep ancient jungles and vast sprawling plains. It's the last stretch of land in Sanctuary's eastern continent, and we've packed it full of experiences for every type of player. In this expansion, there's a whole lot to explore under the dark canopy of Nahantu. Nahantu. Now, see, that looks good. It looks like they're going to have a lot more verticality in this game that they didn't have before. I like that because the landscape of the vanilla region is kind of boring, right? Or is it just me? It's kind of boring, huh? Nahantu is the southernmost region of the eastern continent that Diablo 4 has been taking place in. It's the last region that we haven't visited yet so far in the game, but it is one that we've been to before in Diablo. There's lots of new areas. We have six in total. Four of them are jungle themed, and then we have two that are Red Rock Canyon, but each one of them has their own unique identity. When you first arrive in Nahantu, you're I right. like that. Let's see if we could go back to this real quick. I want to take a look at this because it were oh yeah, that's that's what I'm looking for. This is the dock. This I think this is uh I think this is the Diablo 2 town. Look, we have the dock right here. Yes, it is. Look at the markings right here. What's the name of that? Uh, Kuras, dude. I think this is Kuras, man. This looks like Kuras because we have those markings down there. We have that dock. We know what's at that dock. But didn't they kill him? Didn't they kill the? Didn't they kill Mishif? Was Mishif over there? Yeah, he's the Mishif is the one that took us from Act Two to Act Three, right? I think Mishif would have been over there. This is it, dude. They remade Kuras docks. They remade it. Yep, that's it. And this is where I, I think. Well, no, the assassin wasn't there. It might have been because the way it's skewed. Was he? Let me know in the comments if this is the Karas docks, if you think it is. And what's the layout? Is the way layout a little bit different or we're just seeing it from a different angle? Because it looks like this is where the assassin would have been in Diablo 2. To me, that's what this looks like. Let's go ahead and, uh, you know, keep going. promised we have six in total four of them are jungle themed and then we have two that are red rock canyon but each one of them has their own unique identity when you first arrive in nahantu you're in this place called lingering hatred this is a high treetops canopies where you're almost walking amongst the branches high above the jungle floor imagine a thick canopy that the light is just barely poking through the whole area has been infected by this thing called the hollows infestation the hollows are a new enemy that's associated. That looks pretty good. We see some uh, enemies with some shield gameplay. Of course, the enemy design has always been good in Diablo. Well, I shouldn't say always. There's one thing that I hate. I hate the Goatman and I hate the Kazra. I don't know what it is. I just hate the Kazra. Do you? I do. I hate the Kazra. It with Mephisto. They themselves are kind of like a tar-like substance creature born straight out of the depths of hell. It feels a little twisted. There's a sickness to the area itself. Humans have ventured into this deep part of the jungle where there's all this poisonous plants and, and flora. The dregs actually started that looks good, yeah. with eating these hallucinogens and it put them into this aggressive psycho rage. The dregs were pretty fun because we were able to push more variety in the monster family. You have one of these tall dregs and then half of a body of another dreg on top of it, kind of controlling it and telling it where to go and tossing poisonous bombs at the player. When you come across, it's very memorable. And then we've- Obviously that inspiration came from the V2 enemy. Uh, 
and I forget what those little demons are called, man. My memory's not good, but you know what I'm talking about. So this is obviously inspiration from the Act 3 and D2. And then we've also got the area of Tenganse, where you've got the Tenganse Plateau, which is full of these red rocked plateaus and canyons. Imagine getting up above the land. Those gigantic walls have pockets inside where monsters could live. It offered up a lot of opportunity to bring back a monster family like the Lacunae. We're bringing them back. Oh in no, the Lacunae are coming back. Ooh boy, do you remember those in D3? They were rough. At launch, the Lacunae will destroy you. I always call them Lacunae, but the Lacunae will mess you up in, in Vanilla D3. Vanilla D3 was not playing around. And I kind of wish that Diablo 4 had a similar difficulty to Vanilla Diablo 3 because that stuff was brutal. Almost no one beat the Diab vanilla Diablo 3. Bringing them back in a new Ooh, way. That Here looks is a good. fully fleshed out monster family with multiple classes. What a more brute force looks like. What a caster looks like. They are very much apex predators and we're definitely in their territory. And then there's a little sub area called the Skittering Earth. The name alone makes your skin crawl. And it's bug infested and you can see how the bugs have destroyed the jungles and kind of input their influence on it. Within the Field of Giants, you have these giant corpses of these long dead demons that humans have begun to mine away at for their resources. While they've got a lot of use out of them, they're also toxic to the land around it. The notion of massive demons walking sanctuary a thousand years ago is really thought provoking. Plateau's also got just this beautiful color scheme to the lighting. It's really lovely to be there. And then horrific at the same time, you know, it's great. The mercenaries in Vessel of Hatred are... Uh... Ah, yes, the mercenaries. Been waiting for that, I hope. They are more in depth than the ones in Diablo 2, but the Diablo 2 mercenaries are legendary, as you know. A group of people who we like to describe as ordinary people with extraordinary skills. They have the same level of will to fight against the demons of hell. And there's four mercs that you can collect over the course of the campaign. It starts with Rahir, a blacksmith and a shield bearer, is a more defensive fighter. He's able to go in there and soak up damage, use his shield as a bulwark against the enemy. You meet him early on in the campaign, and he's one who introduces you to the mercenary network. You end up finding acquisition quests for three other mercs that you can find throughout the course of the story. Subo, the drunken archer, is going to work really well for people who want someone who's out of the main melee in the back, offering utility and that kind of range support. This is cool because if you didn't know or you're, you're new to Diablo, you hadn't played Diablo uh, 2, you can... There's certain uniques you want to put on your mercs to complete your build. Now, the good thing about D2 is you didn't need the merc to get really powerful and beat the game. But you did need the Merc if you wanted to be elite, right? If you wanted to be in that top 1% of players, you had to have unique room words. You had to have the best stuff for your companion. Now, although almost everyone used the Act 2 companion with the spear, you know, it was great. To sometimes you could have the Amazon with the bow, Flavi or whatever. Not Flavi, whatever they call it. They had all kinds of random names. You could use that and then you could have an Auras with it. You can have special bows that do special abilities. So I'm hoping that they added uniques and the uniques are, you can give them any unique, right? In Diablo 3, you had to give them a special weapon. I'm hoping that you could just give them any weapon in this and really, really make it crazy. It's got a bunch of really interesting utility skills that you can kind of build in. Finally, we have the demon child, Aldkin, who's a magic user who can transform himself from human form to demon form and join you in combat. Oh, that's good right there, I think. I think I'm probably gonna use him with the uh, with the um, Spiritborn. I might use I might use him. Yeah. There's this really great reinforcement ability where you can take one of the mercenary skills and attach it to one of your powers. So the artwork's fantastic. The details on the ground, the portal, and everything. It, uh, for some reason, it looks better than Vanilla D3. Let me know. I mean, Vanilla D4. Am I just tripping, or does this design look better than what we got now? That when you use that skill, it calls them in to do a specific skill. With the mercenaries for Vessel of Hatred, one of the things we are expanding on is the skill tree. For Diablo 3, you had a very basic type of mercenary. Exactly, exactly. 
push a little bit more into the skill tree and make the mercenary the way you would want to play. Going through that is good, man. Arc and outfitting their skill tree so that it's complementary to your character build. I think that's where the fun in the mercenary system really lies. And here, let me pause it on the skill tree real quick. That means you can apply poison, you can apply frost, and apply other different abilities, and they could sync up with your character, right? Some things you might want more frost. Maybe you could freeze things quicker. You know, if you're using a source and you have a, a, a frost, you put the frost weapons or have frost skills with the mage, you could freeze people quicker, CC them quicker, and more poison. So it's good to have this because you could synergize this really well with your character build. This is a step in the right direction. I like this a lot. Fitting their skill tree so that it's complementary to your character build. I think that's where the fun in the mercenary system really lies. The Dark Citadel is a new in-game feature that's coming in Vessel of Hatred. It's an entirely cooperative player experience. All the mechanics within it are based around you working together with your party members to solve the challenges and face the first Khazra hordes within. One of the outcomes of the Mage Wars is this giant crater and all the souls that were kind of lost in it from those wars. The goal of the first Khazra, who are kind of the original Khazra, they're using the powers within the citadel found within this crater to perform experiments to try and bring back their dark god. Only recently, people have started going missing. They head into the Khazra region, they disappear never to be seen again. So it's clear that whatever they're planning is about to come to fruition and your job as the players to get in there and stop it. Citadels are a place where we take what is the best part of Diablo, combat, and we test it in a different way, which is adding in cooperative mechanics that you have to manage on top of that. For example, a boss has an attack, and as a player, you have to collect an item that allows you to reflect the attack back at him, so there's a little bit of a... All right, let's pause right there. This I don't like at all. It's forcing cooperation. I don't really like that in, uh, in a Diablo game. I know the community is asking for more social stuff, more cooperation, but I don't think this is what we have in mind. This is probably the biggest negative so far of the presentation. You need the multiplayer aspect to get through to the dungeon. And then when you fight the boss, you need to collect an item. I don't like that at all. We're collecting too much stuff in this game. Listen to me, D4 devs. Listen to me, please. We are collecting too much stuff in this game. It's just too much stuff. I don't want to collect this stuff anymore. Do you? Do you? I'm sick of it. I'm sick of collecting. I'm sick of items. I'm sick of all of that, man. I don't want to collect any more stuff. I don't want to collect any more items. I don't want any more summoning materials. I don't want anything. I don't want to collect anything in the expansion. I want to explore the world fight really strong mobs. I want the mobs to be double the power of the regular game. It should be. It should have a level cap. It should be the, the, the best of the best should be in this expansion. It should be like going to Act 5 for the first time in Diablo 2. You know, these enemies should be powerful. Let me know what you think in the comments. I don't really like the way this is going. There's still time for them to change it, but I don't like this at all. Do you? Do you like this at all? We actually have to time your reaction shot. What's interesting about it is when you get multiple people in there, we're each responsible for reflecting that shot once, so we all have to sort of master the timing of that move. You can't do that kind of thing without coordinating as a team, and that's sort of the example of what Citadel gameplay feels like. When designing the Citadel, we designed a lot of really cool bosses. And so one of the things that we did is we took that design and made like armor sets for each of the classes. That way you feel like you took their armor and you feel like you're wearing a little bit of them after your victory. We also have a currency that's dedicated to Oh, no, bro. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. All right. The part of collecting unique armors I really like because, it, you know, it's a reward you can't get in the shop. And if you complete that challenge, kind of like in any MMO or WoW, you know you beat that boss, you beat that raid. So these are kind of like what they're talking about is kind of like a play on raid, on, on a raid. But... Here we go again with currencies. Dude, we have too many currencies, man. Do you guys agree with this, man? 
that we have too many currencies. There's currencies on top of currencies on top of currencies and summoning materials. I just, oh man, I don't know about this one. Please just get rid of the currencies, man. Just whatever you do, just get rid of the- Where as you play through a vendor, can be interacted with to buy custom cosmetics that are unique to the Citadel. You can play with two people, but the, the ideal experience is for four. But in order to facilitate that, we've built an all new Party Finder feature and the community has been pretty- All right, this is actually good. The Party Finder feature is actually good. I'm on board with this, okay? That is good because we could just join parties. And as we know in Diablo 2, Diablo 3, you enter a game, you could find a party almost instantly. So you can't say, oh, they're turning this into an MMO with the party finder. And all of, in the other two Diablo games that were multiplayer, right? You could find a party really quickly. It was instant. Instant. You basically, you dropped into the game and you had a party instantly, right? This is good. This is good, people. I like this a lot because it just goes to show you they are listening to the feedback. We definitely wanted a party finder, not because we wanted to be more like an MMO. We want it to be more like Diablo 2. In Diablo 2, you join a game, you have eight people. You had eight people in games. At the height of that game, at the height of Diablo 2, you had so many games, they were full. Like you would have to click, 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 click just to get in. That's what I want to see. I want to see a lot of multiplayer stuff. But you could always be solo, right? You could be in the other side of the map, quest doing different things. Party members can complete one of the quests while you do the other and you get through the axe quicker. That's what I want to see. That's pretty good. I like that aspect of it. That's not a problem for me. That's good. For a long time. It made a lot of sense to us to pair it with this new Citadel mode. It really is an activity that's geared towards people who love to play together with their friends or with strangers and enjoy that cooperative gameplay. I cannot wait for players to get into the world. I'm really just excited for people to see all the little hidden story. I agree, that's pretty that cool. The team has fit in. So there's interesting things to find and see and discover around every corner. And it's just a really great experience getting to explore in a hunt. Oh, yeah, the spirit born man looks so good looks so good oh yeah oh yeah the spirit born looks so good the mounts everything about the spirit born that's why i'm skipping season five i'm just waiting for the spirit born right so let me give my final thoughts all right the artwork looks good i'm pretty sure they brought the cross docks back i'm gonna go take a look and show you we'll see we'll compare it and see pretty sure that was the cross cross docks i'm going to be hella excited if that's one of the main towns you go to cross I hope it's not like that um, Diablo 3 town where you go to it, there's nothing there. No, I want the Curse Docks to be like a main town where you find lore, you find more other things. That leads me into my next section. We do have more lore. We do add to the Khazra. I hate the Khazra, but we do have more lore to that. We do have new enemies, though. Maybe they're saving the surprises. Maybe the dolls are back. Maybe those, the jib, the dib gems or whatever the hell, not that, that was the knife. The jib gem was the knife or whatever. Maybe those little fire breathing guys are back. That would be cool. You know what else they didn't show? They didn't show the serpents that live in the water, but they did show water. So it would be cool if they brought that back too, that, you know, when they had that water in D2. If you haven't played, they have water in D2 and like the serpents pop up out of that. I hope that they have that in this too. And we will see. We will see if it has that or not. But I hope so. I really hope so. Because that's going to make a huge difference. That's going to be a big, 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 big difference, right? If we can have uh, serpents coming out the ground, if we can have some of the D2 stuff, some of the D2 nostalgia more than we already have, that would be great. That would be great for people like me and players like me who obviously we love D2. You we're like broken records right now at this point. Um, artwork looks good, characters look good, animation looks good, environment looks good. They added a lot more verticality. They have the water. Lacunae comes back. Those are brutal. I hope they are really powerful. 
I want more powerful enemies that just aren't there for pinata. I don't want pinatas in this. I want really powerful enemies where you have to be like level 90 to kill. I highly doubt they're going to do that because they want it to be accessible for everybody. But maybe in tier three, they'll have super powerful enemies. Tier four, I want them to have really powerful enemies that I can barely get through to get around, you know, the open world. I think the open world in D4 is kind of a letdown because the enemies aren't power more powerful. That's probably the thing. So I'm hoping for that. The mercenaries look good. The skill trees look good. It looks like you will be able to synergize them. Diablo 2, there were. You could get different mercenaries with a few different skills, but not that big of a jump. But hopefully, you know, like I said, you can pair Frost with fro Frost and freeze people quicker. You can compare you know, um, fire and, and have the fire traits and boost the fire stuff. You can give them weapons. I hope you can give them things like Shaco. That would be great because in Diablo 2, you could have invincible mercenaries. I want invincible mercenaries. I don't know about you, but I want to be able to find the most elite gear possible for my mercenary and make them invincible. So let me know what you thought about it. And yes, the, the group finder, of course, love the group finder. Like I said, in all of, in the other Diablo games, Diablo Immortal, you go right in, you find a group almost instantly. Diablo 2, there's no time. Even right now, you can, you just join a game. You're instantly in a group. You're instantly in a group. You make the little, you know, you make the names and groups help you get through things, right? It always was that way. Some people will criticize it as being MMO light. It's not. Because let me tell you, in Diablo 2, you had you when you were getting through Diablo 2, you pretty much needed a group to kill Mephisto. You needed to get a group to get a kill on Dario. A group helped a lot in Act Act 2 when you needed to get all the staff shit. You know, you got to get the Viper amulet and the Staff of Kings and the cube, you know, Herodric cube. So groups always were beneficial in Diablo. They always were, and they were always easy to get into. In fact, the group getting to groups, finding groups in Diablo 2 was easier than D3. It was. You did because you can name your game and people want to go to it. So this is good. This is a modern version on that. You name what you want to do, you probably pick from the list. Hey, I want to do dungeons. I want to do whatever, cheer, whatever. You get the group almost instantly. That's great because there, there are a lot of players playing this game. We will be able to get groups really easy. The only thing I don't like about that part was needing to get items to deflect boss attacks. That's a little bit overboard. That is MMO 101. And I didn't want to see that in the game. I didn't like that. And I didn't like having currencies. We have too many currencies. There's too much stuff in this game. We're drowning in that, dude. If it was a swimming pool, no, no, no. It would be an ocean. You'd be at the bottom of that thing like those dudes that blew, you'd blow up down there, man. You, you were drowning in so many materials and summon materials and bullshit. You would just blow up from the pressure, bro. Right? So those are my thoughts on that. Uh, all overall, 9 out of 10, the only ding is that group group cooperation where it's kind of like a mini raid that I don't like. I don't like the boss reflection thing. Everything else looked perfect, man. The landscape, the artwork, the verticality, the water, everything looks good. No complaints whatsoever. That's my reaction to the drop to the fully explored vessel of hatred. Can't wait for it to come out. Let me know what you think in the comments. I want to hear from you, of course. Thanks for liking and subscribing. I'll see you next time.